Sudan is the largest country on the African continent. It shares borders with nine other nations. Apart from a brief period of peace in the 1970s, war has been raging here since independence in 1956. As the humanitarian crisis in the western region of Darfur unfolds, conflict, the displacement of farmers, and the extensive laying of landmines have destroyed traditional farming systems throughout the country. Malakal, Upper Nile State. Continued fighting is limiting access to the surrounding fishing areas and farmland. So this stretch of the River Nile is a vital source of sustenance for the local communities. Especially for people like Daniel Yagoyor, who work the fertile land along its banks. An FAO project is helping Daniel and 34 other local farmers to grow more food. Training courses in farming techniques and a supply of improved varieties of watermelon, tomato, okra and onion seeds are bringing good results. The seeds that the FAO gave us are already treated against disease and they are better for yield and growth. With good harvests, Daniel can make a living, and his fellow villagers have a good source of fruit and vegetables. But here in Malakal, fish is not always in such abundant supply. So FAO is holding workshops for local women in fish preservation, teaching techniques like frying, salting, oil extraction and drying. Even the leftovers, the bones and the scales, are used to make a protein-rich sauce so that absolutely nothing goes to waste. It's vital to have something to fall back on when supplies of fresh fish run out, especially when you have six children to feed, like 35-year-old Monica Odok Awo. It's difficult at the moment because of the fighting around the town and villages. There's just not enough fish for all the communities. Even if you get some fish today, tomorrow you might not. The town of Kadugli lies in the contested Nuba Mountains. Here, about 85% of the population depends on agriculture and livestock for survival. This FAO warehouse is the starting point for an important convoy. Eleven trucks will transport farming and building equipment from government-held territory through rigorous checkpoints and across the mountains to reach farmers in SPLM-held areas. For many years, security problems and a lack of infrastructure meant that the only way to transport supplies was by costly airlifts. But since 2002, the ceasefire agreement has ensured the safe passage of emergency relief supplies by land. With lower transportation costs, the number of people benefiting from FAO emergency projects in the Nuba Mountains has almost doubled. Mamu Dafala Suleiman, an agricultural field officer, coordinates FAO's cross-line operations in the region, where food insecurity levels are high. This uh, particular convoy is, is carrying uh, mainly uh, building materials. Uh, this is for construction of uh, small dams for uh, uh, water harvesting and for construction of stores. Uh, FAO is making sure that whatever service that is delivering in these new mountains should be divided to both sides on an equitable uh, manner. And by saying this, I mean that uh, according to the, to the need. 
Civil war is not the only cause of devastation in Sudan. In July 2003, disaster struck in Kassala, just a few miles from the Eritrean border. When the Algash River burst its banks and swept through the town, streets, houses and the surrounding farming land were completely destroyed. And with them, the livelihoods of the local farming community. After months of hard work, an FAO project to rehabilitate flood-damaged wells is nearing completion. By supplying spare parts and wages for laborers, who are often farmers themselves, in need of extra income, FAO is ensuring that farmers will have access to water, the most vital of commodities. Farmer and well owner Salah El Tahir is taking precautions. He can't risk losing his well, and therefore his livelihood, if floods hit the town again next year. It's frightening, and I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. If we build a barrier wall around the well, about four meters high, we can stop the floods doing more damage. Even in autumn, we wouldn't be affected. Soon, we will have saved the well and we will be able to get back to work. If we don't manage to finish, it will just happen again. Now, with most wells already back in action, FAO is providing vegetable seeds to help the farmers of Kassala get back to work. Juba, Bar el Jabel State. Here, blacksmiths are busy making traditional farming tools for FAO rehabilitation projects. By supplying metal sheets, toolkits, and training. This FAO initiative is giving blacksmiths and farmers the opportunity to make a living. FAO field assistant Monica Jago Morsal explains. But we want to, we want we want them to benefit out of, of this is a sort of income generating activity. That is why we really insist that these tools are to be uh, produced locally. Because these people who are doing the job they are also IDPs. So it's a way of gaining money, of earning money. These women are members of a self-help group. Like the blacksmiths, they are IDPs, internally displaced people. The conflict forced most of them to leave their homes and seek safety in the town of Juba. Some have been here for many years, and they all depend on external aid, like this FAO distribution, and land provided by the Sudanese government to grow food for their families. In Sudan, Women farmers are the driving force in the struggle against hunger. And it's women who opened the way to go outside for cultivation. That is why we are focusing more to women. Because if you give seeds to women, you make sure that you are, this woman, they will, do, they will do something. FAO projects are also supplying farmers and NGOs with training and equipment for seed production and testing which means that these local varieties of sorghum, ground nut and sesame seeds are helping people to earn a living long before they are even planted. FAO's agricultural rehabilitation projects, funded by FAO, Canada, the EC, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and the USA, are reaching people in need. The provision of agricultural inputs, knowledge and skills 
and the reintegration of displaced families will improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of people who have known nothing but war. Building a lasting peace in Sudan will be a long and complex process. But efforts to help the Sudanese people grow enough food can only strengthen the foundations.